So next talk is going to be given by Dr. John Pantoja. Okay, thank you for the introduction and for the invitation to this uh, seminar. I saw a lot of friends uh, connected, uh, uh, a lot of attendants and participants. Uh, yeah, the, 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 this uh, talk is uh, entitled The Study of Conductive Fabrics for Lining Protection Applications. Uh, it's a, a collaborative uh, research conducted by different institutes uh, uh, and uh, we are going to present like a summary of different results that we have obtained on this uh, in the last years on this topic. Um, first, I am going to present the theoretical research, and then Professor uh, Roman is going to present the experimental part of the research. So let's start with the progress of the theoretical research. Uh, first, I would like to, to introduce this, uh, these uh, materials that are very interesting, the electroconductive uh, fabrics. Uh, these are uh, actual fabrics with uh, the capacity of conduct el electric signals, but uh, with the advantage of the fabrics that uh, I, I can uh, describe here, like flexibility, high conductivity in some cases, low weight, uh, impermeability, and durability. Normally, uh, depending on the type of uh, fabric, the type of woven, the, the type, the quantity of fibers that we use in each yarn, we can obtain uh, different uh, uh, physical uh, properties or mechanical properties, let's say. And uh, they are used in many applications. For example, the most common application is electromagnetic shielding but they can be used also for sensing. For example, here in the figures, we have a, an example of a pressure sensor made with, a, made with conductor fibers. In this case, the, the conductive fibers are inside a dielectric layer and by a capacitive effect, they can measure the pressure and yeah, they, they put in, in Different, in different elements like globes or, or wearables. Uh, other applications include electrostatic elimination, transmission of electrical signals, heating, wearable antennas, energy harvesting and storage. Uh, and the application basically depends on the resistivity or the or but uh, we can say that the surface resistance. So as a, we can start, for, for example, for very low uh, resistive uh, fabrics to, to uh, conduct electrical signals, to fabricate uh, sensors, electromagnetic shielding is, uh, requires not so uh, low resistance. And after that, we can pass to uh, isolators for, for other applications. And uh, for example, Mr. Rubiki, uh, Rubiki sorry, mentioned that they can be used as part of uh, covers for electro electronic equipment, wearable shields, or mounted on walls, wallpaper structures. So there are different applications and uh, different studies on this uh, very interesting material. And uh, there is an inter increasing interest to evaluate the response to higher level of currents, such as in the case of fault currents or line, lining current occurrence. So we developed some preliminary results on, on conducting fabrics uh, against uh, high uh, level currents. 
And uh, the results showed that uh, the conductive fabrics maintain a conductive behavior at certain levels of current. And melting and bursts are generated at hot spots producing scratches perpendicular to the current flow. So in the figure, we can see the, the dark areas, the, the scratches. And uh, this can be attributed to the conductive layer evaporation that generates a non-linear electrical behavior, so non-linear resistance. So we started to study this, uh, this problem uh, with different approaches. We found, for example, that for exploding wires, the the thermal process is described uh, using this variable, the specific action. Here in the figure, we can see the change of the resistivity of a wire, uh, a thin wire, as a function of the specific action. The specific action is the integral of the uh, current density, uh, the, the integral of the square of the current density in the time. So as the specific action increases, different changes in the material in the conductive wire appears. The first limit is the melting limit, then the liquid limit, then the vaporization limit is exceeded, and at some point, burst occurs. And the resistivity starts to decrease. The other uh, option or the, the, the other uh, parameter that we can use to assess the, the performance of these uh, conductive fabrics is the, the energy density directly. But the issue with the energy density is that the resistivity depends on the energy density, and the energy density depends on the resistivity. So is not as a simple, uh, let's say, way that these variables are dependent. So we decided to work with the specific action that only deals with the current density. And in conductive fabrics, we can see that the, the current density is not uh, homogeneous. So to, to, to establish or to determine the uh, the current density in each uh, in each section and mainly in the, in the critical uh, let's say areas of the fabrics, we developed a very simple equivalent circuit in which we try to represent areas in which uh, the, the the current density was uh, homogeneous. So, for example. We assume that in this area, in this squared area, the current density was homogeneous and we assign a resistance. But in the, let's say, in the, in the contact area between germs, between weft and worm germs, we included a different behavior by means of a different resistance that we call the, the contact resistance. And after that, we assume that uh, again we have uh, a new uh, area with a uh, homogeneous current density, and uh, again a contact resistance. So we modeled the the fabric with this network of of resistance in series, and then we model it, each of these uh, columns with uh, a new a new parallel network of serious resistance. And we realized that the problem is in the contact area. So to calculate, yeah, this is the, the, the photograph of some experimental results that we obtained. We see that the problem or the burn, let's say, areas are the, the contact areas between, between germs. Uh, but the, the Gubbins sections 
in most of cases maintain the, the, the conductive layer. So we started to analyze in detail this contact area. We can see in this photograph uh, cross, a cross section uh, uh, figure showing the, 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 the detail of this fabric. We see the, the, the weft yarns and the warp yarns. Uh, and, the, and each yarn has its own conductive layer. And if we try to do a, a model, uh, assuming this, uh, this current flowing through this direction, we can see that there are some areas in which the, 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 the transversal area to the current is reduced. And we call this area the contact area between weft and warp yarns. That corresponds to transversal yarns to the current and parallel yarns with, with respect to the current. So the critical part is, according to this model, is, the, is, the, is this contact area. And we uh, tried with these photographs to, to calculate this area to, to determine the specific action, the delivered specific action, particularly in these areas. Uh, okay, so this is uh, basically uh, with the photographs we obtained the area, the contact area, and with the with some sensors we measured the current, and we after that we calculated the specific action, uh, and we compared after that with experimental results. Uh, so the experimental setup was uh, this one: we generated a current input with eight microseconds uh, rise time and 20 microseconds half duration time, two peak currents, five kiloamps and nine kiloamps. This is the waveform of the current. This was the, the circuit used for the experimental tests. And uh, we tested three samples, small samples for each case. And for the five kiloamps signal, we didn't obtain any visual result. But for the nine kiloamps, we obtained the superficial scratches, and we try to compare these uh, results, let's say visual results, with our uh, estimation with the specific action. And we can see this column is this this figure, this figure showed results for the first test, the five kiloamps test, and for the second test, that is the uh, around nine kiloamps test, and we can see that the model or this uh, this equivalent circuit uh, used to calculate the specific action can predict that these samples uh, exceed the burst threshold. So with this, we could conc conclude that uh, a change of phase in conductive layer can be predicted using this uh, specific action procedure. This is uh, the, uh, the, the progress that we have for now in the, in the theoretical part. We have uh, some progress in the, in the experimental part, and I will give the floor to Professor uh, Francisco Roman to continue with the presentation. Thank you very much.